Hey there everyone. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, I want to talk to you about the woman of indoor today. Um, I don't expect this to be a very long video, but this is a very, very interesting Bible story. And um, the reason I'm even bringing this story up in particular is because um, the same sort of thing goes on today. There's a lot, a lot of, of witchcraft, sorcery, happening even now. There was a lot back in Bible days and there's a lot even now. And so this story takes place in 1 Samuel chapter 28 verses 3 through 25. And basically what's happening is uh, King Saul has is out of favor with God. Like he's been disobedient several times. He's not listening to God. God stops talking to him. And he's like, how come God's not talking to me? How come I can't hear from God? How come, you know, it's like you've been disobedient and God has is out of fellowship with you and so he can, can't hear from God and so he wants to find a man of God who can hear from God so that he can find out um, he wants God to do something in his favor pretty much and so he's looking for Samuel who had died and he goes to a witch he goes to a medium somebody who can talk to the dead for him so that he can talk to Samuel the way this story works out is that Saul decides to disguise himself because he had put out all the witches, all, all the warlocks, all the people in the Bible that had been, um, you know, doing, practicing witchcraft and all that in honor to God. And then he disguises himself and goes to see her. So he goes to see this woman in Endor, disguised, right? So then he comes to her and she says, well, who do you want me to bring up for you? And um, he says, I want you to bring up. Samuel for me, the prophet. And she gets scared because she's like, um, we just got put out of the kingdom for doing this. And she's like, that's not really something I want to do. And he says, get this, he says, I swear to you by God, in God's name, that nothing will happen to you for doing this for me. And she's like, okay. <laughs> so then she goes ahead and, and does her divination and brings up Samuel. Now this is the thing, like in the Bible, there there are a lot of witchcraft, there's a lot of reference to people who have died and communicate with people who are alive. And basically, this is what the Bible is showing us, that the spirit lives on. Like if this is confusing to you, basically, everybody's going to die, right? Uh, can people communicate with dead people? That's what witches do. Now. The thing is, God has specifically said, don't do that. Don't communicate with dead people. Don't ask them for stuff. Don't, you know, don't play with witchcraft, sorcery. All of those things are dark arts. Um, you're supposed to be leaning more towards the spirit if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit that we're supposed to be in contact with. Other spirits are not um, something we're supposed to be toying with, playing with, um, and so basically Saul was, was doing this, okay? He asked her to bring up Samuel who was dead, and she did. Samuel comes up. I don't know how this happens. The Bible doesn't give us a whole lot of detail about it. It just says she brings him up. And so when she does, um, Samuel's like, why are you disturbing me? Like he was in a place of rest, which is interesting because there are other people who were brought up from the dead who were not in a place of rest. They were in a place of torture. But Samuel was a man of God, and he was brought up. And so... When um, she brings him up, uh, she gets scared and she's like, oh my gosh, it's Samuel. And then she said she recognizes Saul for who he is. And she said, oh, you're the king. You're the one who told us not to do this. And yet you're coming to see me. And she's like surprised and shocked. Here's Samuel. Here's Saul. So Samuel pretty much says, you know what, Saul? God's not talking to you because you've done wrong. You've committed sin. You've done it over and over. No wonder God's not talking to you. As a matter of fact, God just let me know that tomorrow you and your sons will be with me, which means he was going to die, which means he was definitely out of favor with God and that he was going to die the next day. And Saul was just undone after that. He was just thoroughly um, upset. And so this woman of Endor actually had compassion on him. And she was like, oh, King, you know, why don't you rest? Why don't, why don't I get you some food? Like, it'll, you know, let's, let's, let's try to, you know, take it easy and this and that. But he was pretty upset. Now, this story, it, it's a deep story. It really is. Read 1 Samuel chapter 28, 
verses 3 through 25. It's a very interesting story. It just lets me know that there is no good reason to disobey God, number one. There is no good reason for us to do what God has told us not to do, okay? When we do that, we do nothing but harm ourselves, harm, our, harm the future generation. Not only he died, but his sons died. At this point in time, God was punishing the sins of the fathers upon the children and generation after generation. In the New Testament, um, God made provision for that. But during this time, it was like if your parents were disobedient to God, you got in trouble. And so he wasn't even thinking about the legacy that he was going to be carrying on to his sons. You know, those were going to be future kings. So not only did God wipe out his uh, personal kingship line, but those who were going to be following him. God had snatched the kingdom from Saul and given it to David. David was the one who was going to be anointed king. Samuel anointed David to be king instead of Saul, and that's why he was upset in the first place. And so he kept trying to earn favor with God, but he was doing it all on his own power, all in his own unction. Even before this story, Saul had this great idea, even though it was a priest's job to offer sacrifices, he said, you know what, I'm going to offer a sacrifice to God myself. I'm the king, I can do that, was warned not to do it, and did it anyway. This man was very stubborn, and you don't want to have a stubborn spirit. You don't want to do that because it will make you feel like you can depend on yourself. It will make you feel like you need something that you don't need, like going to a witch for advice going to a witch for help so that you can manipulate God into doing what you want him to do. The Bible says that manipulation is as the act of witchcraft. You know, hating people is like witchcraft. Um, manipulating people is like witchcraft. Wives who try to manipulate their husbands into doing things, husbands who try to manipulate their wives, anybody who is trying to make somebody do something and is trying to navigate things and work things in their favor, that's not of God. And honestly, even in today's culture, we see a lot of witchcraft. We've got tarot cards. We've got witchcraft. We've got all types of mediums, spiritism, uh, all sorts of things. It's like, let's, let's put this spell on somebody. It's, it's running rampant. And, you know, I want to tell you right now, if you have dappled in demonic arts, if you have dappled in spiritism, in witchcraft, in tarot cards, um, in horoscopes, in um, things of that nature, or like Ouija boards, um, fortune cards, fortune tellers, all of that sort of thing is spiritism. All of that is demonic and witchcraft. You need to repent. I'm telling you right now, you need to repent because God is not playing with you and neither is the devil. There is... Um, God has given the enemy a certain amount of power, okay? He has a certain amount of influence, but God says, this is your leash, and you can go no further. But if you call yourself a child of God, and you start playing with that leash, and you start messing with demonic things, best believe that you will reap what you sow. And it's not pretty, okay? You don't want to mess with those things, because that leaves less room in your life for the Spirit of God to work and to take over. You see, every time you dabble in things like that and you play around or do it for fun or think that's interesting or try to manipulate somebody doing something like you pull yourself further away from God just like Saul did you you don't you, if you call yourself a Christian granted nobody can take you out of God's hand but you can lose fellowship with God like Saul did losing fellowship losing fellowship and it's like you can't even hear God anymore you can't even hear if God is speaking to you anymore. And then God doesn't want to speak to you anymore. You're not listening. Why should he speak to you? And so in this story, we see this woman of Endor who had pretty much sold herself to Satan. This is how she was known as a witch. That was like, she doesn't even have a name in the scriptures. She's called the woman of Endor or the witch of Endor. And so you don't want to, you don't want to lose the name of God in your life. You don't want to lose taking the name of the bridegroom for yourself, okay? If you want to call yourself a Christian, that means you are the bride of Christ. You don't want to lose his name. And so I beg you, if you have done those things, I want you to repent. That means to stop, turn around. Don't do those things anymore. It displeases God. It's not according to his will. He wants you to seek after the things of God, not the things of the enemy, don't go searching after the enemy. He's already 
going to be busy going after men and women of God who are actually doing what God wants them to do. And so you don't want to be a pawn in his hand and start beginning to sow things that you're going to reap later on. And not only you, but your children and your children's children. God does not play with the devil and the devil does not play with you. I beg you to repent if this is you. Tarot cards, witchcraft, sorcery, Ouija boards, all those types of things, spiritism, casting curses, hexes, vexes, charms, all sorts of things like that. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I want to pray for you because no matter if you've, if you've messed with those things, you may be a witch yourself. You may be into some kind of spiritism yourself. But you know what? If you're hearing this word and it's pricking your heart, that means God is ready to change you. God is still ready to help you to come out of darkness and into the light. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I ask you, I ask you, Father God, to prick the hearts of people, Lord God, who are, who are looking to other powers, oh God, for their strength, for their comfort. Lord, I pray, God, that you will prick their hearts, that you will convict them, Lord Jesus. It's only you, Lord God, who bring us to yourself in the first place. And so I pray, Father God, for all of those, Lord God, under the sound of my voice, Lord God, who have been delving in, in dark arts and, and in spiritism and in witchcraft and in Satanism. Father God, we rebuke those things in the name of Jesus, and I pray that you will break those chains off of people, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask for your Holy Spirit. Spirit to arrest the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you will begin to set people free, that you will loose them from the holds of the enemy, that they will repent, that they will turn around and run into your loving arms, O oh God. I pray, Father God, that you will help them to repent, Lord God, and to renounce the things of the enemy. And I pray, God, that you will set them free right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your power. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the only power and that no other powers, no other authorities exist except by you giving them permission. And I pray, Father God, that you will help people, Lord God, to turn to you. Oh, Lord God, I pray that you will show yourself strong on their behalf, God. I pray that the moment they turn, the moment they decide that I'm going to live for Christ, that you will cover them, that you will protect them, that you will send your angels to guard round about them, oh God. Help them not to delve into things that they know not about, God. But I pray, Lord God, that you will rush in and deliver, deliver them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We give your name thanks. We give your name praise because you are the almighty, only, loving, wonderful God, and you have all power, O oh God, and we thank you and we praise you. We give your name thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You know what? I, if you have questions about this witchcraft, sorcery, all of these sorts of things, I'd love to answer your questions. Um, there's a lot in this chapter. There's just a lot, and I, there's no way I can cover it in a little 15-minute video. But... You know, if this is something that you've been caught up in in the past, God is still a deliverer. God is able to bring you out and to bring you in to his light. So thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of White Style Image Network. God bless you, and you have a blessed day. May God bless you abundantly. Bye-bye.